Hello, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to animate in dreams and just in general talking about the technical stuff behind the animation tools in dreams. Um, these are things that I personally find useful to know and things that I've learned over the years since the early access in 2019. This is for both experienced streamers and people who have joined recently through PlayStation Plus. I've made a list of the things that I've learned over the years and things that I think is useful to know. So these are the topics of discussion. I split the topics into chapters down the bottom, so feel free to click back and forth throughout the video. So let's begin with the first topic, the three types of animation that you will encounter in Dreams. So since Dreams is a real-time engine, animation can be applied to a variety of things. So things like gameplay, which deals with procedural properties and logic, Animation can also be applied to cutscenes, which is like the traditional kind of film language, like the John Wick sequence that you're seeing right now is a cutscene. And the third thing where animation can be applied to is a quick time event, which involves button mashing. So depending on which one you want to do, um, you have to adjust the procedural properties for the character before you start animating to avoid issues. But in this video, we're going to just focus on cutscenes. So this leads us to our second topic, which is how to set up characters for cutscenes. What you want to do is disable the movable, collidable, the procedural stuff like auto look, procedural animation, and procedural walk. So if you have it turned off, it should move something like this, where it's nice and clean. But if you turn them on, the character will go into gameplay mode and react with the environment. And um, also, if you turn on the procedural animation, you can see like he's starting to breathe a little bit. So yeah, uh, when you click on procedural animation, it um, turns on the first three tabs. So all these sliders that you see that controls the character's behavior, uh, that's the procedural animation button. but. Um, this is what it looks like if you don't have the procedural walk, the character will slide around. But if you have the procedural walk on, you don't have to keyframe anything or animate anything. It's already automatically driven by procedural animation whenever you push on the L stick on a controller. So that can save you a lot of animation time. And you don't have to animate every footstep but if a character has multiple states for example like skateboarding you might want to disable the procedural walk in order to get his feet to stay still whenever he moves around so yeah as a general rule if you want a particular type of motion that is custom then you might want to disable the procedural animations in order to achieve it because sometimes the procedural animations will conflict with whatever you're trying to do specifically however on the flip side procedural animations can also save you a lot of time as well it depends on what you're trying to achieve but Generally, for cutscenes, you want to turn it off and then manually animate using the action recorder, the keyframe, the timeline, and the camera. 
There are also other gadgets and dreams that controls the mood and feel of the scene as well, which come into use later. But for now, we'll talk about frame rates in dreams. So a useful trick for anyone who's starting out, if you hover over anything in dreams, so let's say I hover over this, like I don't know what it is. If you hover over it, you can find videos about it. And um, you can also read up on what it does. So keep an eye out for these shortcuts. So if you hover over the timeline, there will be shortcuts around the imp. So these are really handy. Um, if you look at the bottom left, it says L1 left and right. And this zooms in and out on the timeline. And on the timeline, um, if you have it set to the clock time and the clock time counts every second but if you zoom in l1 left and right the seconds will turn into frame numbers so if you zoom all the way in these end up as frame numbers and as you can see there are 30 frames within one second so yeah if dreams works at 30 frames per second and knowing the frame rate is a very handy thing, especially if you want to use reference footage from like a video camera or something like that. You can throw it into After Effects, convert it to 30 frames per second, and now you have footage that runs at 30 frames, and then Dreams runs at 30 frames, so it just makes your life easier when doing audio syncing or timing. But what happens if you have footage that is different from 30 frames per second? This is a tip on how to get other frame rates such as 24 frames or 12 frames per second. Um, you want to grab another timeline. Put it in here. Zoom in all the way for this timeline as well until it's the frame numbers and then copy these. So holding X, you can drag the keyframes L1, R2 to clone it, and then just paste it into this timeline. But make sure there's only 24 of these frames. And then what you wanna do is trim this till it touches the 24th frame. So we know like this is the second mark, but this is 24 frames. So if we want 24 frames within a second, what we can do is change this playback speed to 80%. So if we change it to 80%, it will reach the second mark. So now it stretches the keyframes inside to meet the second mark. So Therefore, we have 24 frames within a second. You can do the same thing for 12 frames per second. So if you just have 12 frames and trim the timeline, and then adjust the playback speed to like 40%, you can get 12 frames within a second. So the frame rate in Dreams is 30 frames per second. It's also the same for an action recorder. So Media Molecule, they added a keyframe mode and some other controls now. So if you go into keyframe mode and then uh, touch on the touchpad on the right side of the touchpad, you can jump up a frame. And if you touch on the left side of the touchpad, you can go backwards on the frame. There's also a scroll forward so if you hold on to the scroll forward it will quickly scroll through it so yeah not only 30 frames per second applies to the regular timeline it also applies to the action recorder as well so whenever you hit 30 frames it will equal a second okay so moving on to the next topic action recorder versus regular keyframes so the action recorder is pretty interesting because Media Molecule, they updated it 
sometime around the server migration. So now the action recorder has a keyframe mode. So whenever you move a character around all the keyframes, they will appear in a spreadsheet and um, they are named accordingly to what you moved. But if you want to see what it is actually animating, there is a cool trick. Uh, we can go into the show hide and invisible connections. So if we turn this on, you can see like what the keys are connected to. And the same thing goes with like a regular keyframe. Like if you move anything on the puppet with a regular keyframe like this, and then click on the keyframe, you can see what it's actually connected to. Yeah, keyframes in general not only moves the, like the character, it can also adjust things in the properties as well. So you can also adjust any of these properties. But then um, if you want to quickly delete and deanimate these things, you just delete those wires that is attached to the, the keyframe. Um, this is useful, especially when you don't want to name your keyframes. So a tip of mine is actually naming your keyframes um, so you know what it actually does. But if you don't know what it does and you don't know what it's connected to, you can use the invisible connections to find out what it's actually affecting. And then, you know, you can delete all of those wires um, if you want to. Yeah, you can't really delete those wires from an action recorder. You have to actually go in and delete the keyframes in here. There is a difference between a regular keyframe and a keyframe within an action recorder. And it has to do with the thermometer. So if you turn on the thermometer under show and hide and go down here, keyframes regular keyframes they affect the gameplay memory while keyframes within the action recorder it affects the shared memory within the graphics memory so keyframes are more expensive action recorders are more cheaper so if you go in here and go more details in the gameplay memory the wires and animation they fill up like crazy but action recorders, they use the shared memory under the animation. And you can see like it's 0.08% animation. So it's really low thermo costing. Um, but there are a few things to keep in mind when you're using the action recorder. Everything that you move on the puppet will be placed on the spreadsheets as separate keyframes. Regular keyframes are different in that you can animate multiple body parts and then keep it all in one place in one keyframe and then uniformly adjust the timing for all those body parts unless you choose to place more keyframes to control the different body parts. However, for an action recorder, you cannot compile all the body parts into one keyframe. If you move the puppet around, it will always keep the keyframes separated regardless. So both have their pros and their cons. The action recorder keeps the memory low, but you have to work with a lot of keyframes. While the regular keyframes keeps things simple, but it's more expensive and uses a lot more memory so the next topic that i wanted to talk about is like the pipeline for dreams so traditionally if you're doing an animation like a pixar animation the pipeline would be storyboard animatic layout animation and then lighting and rendering however in dreams you don't have to worry too much about the lighting and rendering because it's a real-time engine. So with 
Pixar animation, they have render farms and it takes like 70 hours to render one frame or something. But in Dreams, everything's running in real time. So technically you can also, during the layout stage, add in lights in the scene and it's already rendered because there's real time rendering and all you need to focus on now is the animation. There's also great effects that you can adjust and there's also sun and sky options. You can change the environment and the look and feel of your animation and then you don't have to worry about rendering out each individual frame. It's already uh, rendered. It's already there and ready to go. The last topic for this video will be talking about Dream's limitations in relationship to the 12 principles of animation. So the 12 animation principles were developed at Walt Disney Studios. It was a way to distinguish different types of motion in footage so that the animators can get better, more believable movement. Dreams can do most of them, but there are limitations when it comes to squash and stretch since Dreams uses mostly solid sculptures. Luckily, there are members in the Dreams community who have already found solutions to the squash and stretch limitation in Dreams. Uh, one creator in particular is Vizium, who discovered Bendy Man. So Bendy Man is a sculpture that was converted to a painting and then under the painting properties was made physical, but um, there's a whole lot more steps behind that. So I recommend checking out his tutorial on his YouTube channel to get a uh, squash and stretch. There are also squash and stretch um, in sculptures with a squashiness slider, and this can be useful as well. Um, but it is, nothing compared to the uh, bendy man which is a much more complex kind of shape so with the viz paint technique you can achieve something like this from crinodican so for the t-rex's neck it's using the um, squash and stretch technique that vizim did for the bendy man as you can see so that is a sculpture that has been converted to a painting and with the vism technique but there are some other creators such as willow the bob uh Kowitza and smash tag who i don't know if they do use the vism technique but they have a really clever way of rigging characters just using solid sculpts where you can still create the illusion of squash and stretch in the face, for example. So it just goes to show like there's always a workaround to any kind of limitation if you're willing to put time and effort into something. So yeah, that's pretty much most of the things that I wanted to cover in this video in terms of animating using dreams. Um, in the next video, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into some really handy tools um, to use when you're animating. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.